Welcome back, everyone. I'm the Bad Luck Gamer, and first of all, before anything, I just wanted to thank you all so much for the massive amount of growth that the channel has been having. It might not be super obvious because obviously we didn't get like thousands of subs out of nowhere, but the views on the channel and our sub rate has essentially tripled overnight, it seems like, after all the OGL business and all the people who are looking into Pathfinder 2E today. So it's really good for the channel, and I really hope we can take it somewhere great. I just wanted to thank you all before we got started. I'm not going to drag this out or anything like that, because I know y'all hate it, but thank you nonetheless. All right, so today we're going to be talking about a very interesting archetype that honestly I think is another sleeper hit, though I can tell that the writer for this initial archetype was trying really hard to make a really well-designed and fit in the game style archetype and it's very obvious with a lot of the wording as you all see we'll see here soon but it's just really funny because they missed on a couple very key important parts that make all the extra work kind of silly but let's get into it we're going to be talking today about the firework technician which is an alchemical based archetype which is really good if you're an alchemist and decent if you're anything else other than an alchemist especially spellcasters which i'll talk about here in a little bit but it's actually a really good diverse and unique archetype that gives you a lot of utility and tools to handle a lot of situations so let's go ahead and take a look at it all right so for the initial dedication feat here i actually got pulled up over here because there's <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot if you can see with all the text here so let's get into the basics first of all you need to be at least trained in crafting which is not super hard and you can pick this up as early as level two so honestly it's a very easy archetype to get into which i think is one of its many strengths honestly now there's a lot of flavor text here and i'm just gonna say the basics of what it gives you so if you're not trained in fireworks lore, you become trained in fireworks lore. And if you are trained in fireworks lore, you become an expert in fireworks lore. Now, usually when you get a lore with an archetype, it's nothing really that major. And it's just something to kind of add as flavor or just to represent your character's knowledge on the field. But fireworks lore actually does come up a little bit later in the archetype. I wouldn't say it's a skill that you would need to increase very quickly but having a higher fireworks lore is actually beneficial in this archetype so just something to keep in mind this is also a really good dedication feat because it also gives you alchemical crafting the the skill feat which is super solid and if there's something you're planning on doing already this is really good it's not good because i think one of the classes that benefit the most from firework technician is the alchemist and you already get alchemical crafting. So it's not really good in that regard. But hey, if you're playing something like an inventor or an investigator, both classes that I think would really benefit from this archetype dedication, that's a really solid pickup, honestly, overall. Now, not only do you get alchemical crafting, but you also get an, an amount of infused reagents equal to your level that you can use only for making fireworks. Now, if you have another source of infused reagents, say you're playing an alchemist, you take the higher of your infused reagent amounts, you do not add them together. So unfortunately, you can't boost your infused reagent numbers, which would be honestly super broken if you could. Now, you also gain access to advanced alchemy, which allows you to craft alchemical items at the beginning of your day, specifically fireworks in this case, without spending any gold or without spending any of the time required to make the fireworks. Super solid, but not super relevant to this archetype dedication actually at all. Now, the biggest reason is advanced alchemy is mostly used for making alchemical items, but the fireworks that this archetype dedication uses are actually not actual fireworks you have. They're abilities you get with the, what's it called, launch firework display skill or action. So it's it's very weird. And as of my researching of this video, there's only three alchemical item or three fireworks in the game currently that this advanced alchemy even really would apply to. 
And another thing, and again, you can see that this person has put a lot of effort into all the writing here, and they tried very hard to make sure that the rules work and everything fits neatly together. But firework is not a trait in the game, so there's no alchemical items with the firework trait. So what are fireworks? Well, fireworks are anything that say they're fireworks in their description somewhere. So... Well, I'll pull up a couple here. There's going to be the the Dwarven Daisy Lesser and the moderate versions of this firework. And as far as... Oh, no, there's also the Tar Rocket Snare, I believe. Yes, the Tar Rocket Snare, the Dwarven Daisy. And there's technically a Firework Pogo, which is a vehicle you can use. It's a very fun one. And it's not an alchemical item though, so technically it doesn't qualify for the use of the reinfused reagents, which makes sense because it's a, a vehicle and it, it's a really good item, honestly. But uh, hey, if my firework person wanted to make one, I, I probably wouldn't say no. I probably wouldn't let them use infused reagents for it, but I think it's interesting. Anyway, so these are the only fireworks in the game. Which makes the overall archetype dedication giving you advanced alchemy very silly in a lot of ways. But if they add more fireworks, then this gets better. It's just they have to add more fireworks for this feature to get better. And honestly, it's not that big a deal. You get so much with this initial dedication feat that I wouldn't worry about it overly too much. Hey, just the infused reagents that you're going to use for your abilities from this archetype and the fact that you get alchemical crafting and you get a proficiency increase with fireworks lawyer makes the dedication feat one of the better dedication feats in the game as, par as far as sheer value. And we're not even done yet. So I did mention earlier, there's an action you get with this dedication called launch firework display. It's a one to three action based on the kind of firework that you're making and you expend infused reagents to create a specific type of firework. And this is where the firework technician gets really good because essentially you're gaining spell-like abilities or spell slot-like things using infused reagents. And there's ways to boost infused reagents, like if you have a homunculus familiar is a really good example, or a familiar in general. I think most familiars can have the infused reagent familiar or master ability master ability all right so let's go ahead and take a look at some of the fireworks that you get you get three firework essentially recipes or abilities right with the initial dedication fee which again if they had made this second part a extra fee i would not have minded because of how much you get with the initial dedication fee but let's look into what you get with all this stuff so firework Launch fireworks display is essentially you need a hand free and you set off a firework and you can set off a normal firework, which creates a loud visual audio effect within up to 20 feet from you that you can use as some kind of signal. Uh, who knows? But you can also use them with the unique abilities found here in the firework technician dedication. The first you get here is Comet, which allows you to shoot light in a 60 foot line. And those that line remains illuminated until the start of your next turn, which is really good. And not only that, this is not an action that is very used in Pathfinder 2E, but there is technically a point out where you single out a creature. I think it's an action. Yeah, it's an action, and essentially what it does is if you see a creature that your allies do not see, they become hidden to your allies rather than undetected. It's super niche, and most people don't do it that way anyway, but that is an effect of the comment. Now, regardless, being able to create a bright light until the start of your next turn is actually devastating to some kind of enemies who have a light vulnerability. So this is a good way to create a very solid lighting effect. And it's a bright light, so it probably casts also a dim light, though it doesn't say here specifically. Most of the time whenever there's dim light, it, it's for an extra range. So you get a pretty nice area of lighting that can aid your allies if you're ever in a dark situation. 
something that I think is very interesting, but this is just the beginning and honestly one of the weaker effects. Now the flower or Hanabi, if you're a weeb like myself, you ignite a ring of sparks and create a shape that might be reminiscent of a flower blooming in the sky. Though it's not in the sky because it's kind of like localized on you. Each enemy within 20 feet of you must make a fort save and on a failure, they become dazzled one for a round. And on a crit failure, they become dazzled for two rounds. Two rounds. Blah, blah. Which is really good. If you don't know, when you're dazzled, all creatures are considered concealed to you. Meaning that you need to make a DC 5 flat check to even hit them. Even if they succeed the check, it affects all enemies within 20 feet of you. So you're very likely to get some enemies that are still failing the check regardless, which makes this a really strong ability and it specifies enemies. So you don't even have to worry about friendly fire with this effect. Honestly, for a one action ability that does cost an infused reagent, but I mean, you get an amount equal to your level. So I mean, at level five, you could do this five times in a day. That's pretty solid. And you can dazzle enemies. And not only that, but because they become concealed, your allies can use the stealth action, or no, the hide action to become hidden, and then stealth to become undetected to the enemy at least until the end, of, or in, it, it's uh, based on round, right? Yeah, dazzle. So essentially it'd be until your next turn, which is really good. And the final one here is salute. And there's a lot of text here, and I'm just going to break it down to its most simple effects essentially salute allows you to per commit hostile actions to your allies without actually hurting them and this is genuinely a really good ability because essentially the target is if you have an ally who is confused or fascinated and if they're confused or fascinated you can do this hostile action against them and they essentially get another flat check to remove the confusion as if they had been attacked by an enemy and for fascinated it ends most fascinated effects when you receive a hostile action of any kind so in all honesty this is a really good pocket ability because and again this is just an ability that you have you don't have to prep these ahead of time these are just abilities that you can use when the situation comes up which makes us super versatile and dynamic and is very solid and rather or not comment or salute really comes up that often flower is very consistently a very good ability to have on hand and it's a single action these are really really good all right next up is coughing dragon display which is very interesting and this is a firework that has the option of being either a auditory or visual effect and you can actually expend an additional reagent it costs two batches, by the way. So this one costs two batches, is two actions, though you can expend an additional batch and increase the action cost to three to do both effects. But what does this do? So the Coughing Dragon display allows you to attempt to disrupt a auditory or visual or both effect going on. You attempt to counteract one or more of these effects until the start of your next turn which is really good though super niche though it's a very solid ability because it has to be an ongoing effect not something caused by an auditory or visual effect like demoralize for instance but say you're fighting like a basilisk that has a visual ability that causes you to turn to stone if you look at it you can actually attempt to suppress that ability using the coughing dragon display essentially you would say okay there's basilisk here it's turning my friends to stone i'm going to spend two actions and two batches and i'm going to attempt to counteract its visual effect and this can be as you're blinding the creature or whatever making it hard for it to focus on anyone to turn them to stone in any regard you attempt to counteract the effect and you use your fireworks lore as the modifier for the counteract which is super good and super solid because your fireworks lore is just a skill you can boost this really easy and this makes it really hard to resist unlike a lot of other effects like that depend on spell casting modifier and such it's the modifier to your mod uh, to your fireworks lore, which is just so cool it's really really good honestly and 
this is just a really good effect that can come up in some very niche but very huge situations. And, oh, I did forget about the initial dedication fee. Whenever you have a firework saving throw, it's always based on either your class DC or spell casting DC. So any of your fireworks abilities, they require some kind of saving throw. It's based on that. And it, this is kind of one of the interesting things. It's normally something I don't really think about because a lot of it makes sense. But honestly... It's weird that spellcasters are just better with fireworks. It doesn't matter if you're some super firework pro. Spellcasters are mostly going to just have better saving throws for their fireworks than any other class would. Even an alchemist, which is kind of weird. And I, I wish they had just made it straight up class DC because that would make sense and make it more balanced. Otherwise, spellcasters get this huge benefit from a lot of different archetypes now that I'm thinking about it. But a lot of times it's kind of like justifiable. This is just it's sure mechanical engineering and know-how, which isn't very magical in nature. So I don't know why the saving throw is class DC or spell DC, but I don't know. I mean, the only thing I can wager is it's technically because most spellcasters don't ever improve their class DC, which means they would be stuck at trained for class DC. But most non-spellcasters get maybe up to expert with a few exceptions which does make this honestly a very interesting archetype it's really good for spellcasters and i think for an uh inventor i don't even think alchemist gets that high with their class dc which is very very strange but yeah so coughing dragon display is a very solid yet niche ability and what i would actually always recommend picking up because when you do need it you're gonna be thankful you have it the next feat is Expert Firework Crafter. It changes your advanced alchemy from 1 to your level minus 2. And for if you don't know what advanced alchemy does, more or less, what it does is allow... I did mention this earlier, but I, I forgot to mention like the specifics. It allows you to craft alchemical items at using your infused reagents without spending time or gold. Now, you have an advanced crafting alchemy level, which, or, yeah, advanced crafting alchemy level, which is equal to one until you pick this one up, and then it's your level minus two, which means you cannot make alchemical items using your infused reagents unless they are that level or lower. So this is okay if you want to make more, like, the tar rocket, for instance, but until they add more fireworks to the game, honestly, this is a feat I would probably skip. Jumping Jenny display is a surprisingly also very unique and interesting firework that you can use and its use is very particular but I think it's really really good and it messes up flying enemies specifically. So what it does is you spend a single action but two reagents and you target a flying creature within 60 feet of you which is really good because a lot of effects that affect flying creatures that usually have to be like directly above you or something like that but this is any flying creature within 60 feet of you which is very solid and what happens is until the start of your next turn whenever that creature attempts to fly and the fly action is just a stride action but flying obviously they need to make a acrobatics check to maneuver in flight against your dc for your fireworks display so class dc or spell dc or the fly action is disrupted, which is nuts. Because that means that in order for them to even move in the air, every time they do so, they need to make an acrobatics against your fireworks DC. And you can disrupt movement with this, which is nuts. And the, the big topper on top of this is... For flying creatures, unless otherwise stated, the, the general rule is in order to stay in flight, they must use one of their actions every round to fly. If they fail to do this, they fall to the ground harmlessly, but they're now grounded. The jumping denny, de, blah. The jumping jenny display is a really good way to ground flying enemies or to make their life a living hell because they have to fly every round to remain flying. So they're going to be innately rolling against your DC anyway. And if they fail, they got to try again, waste an action. Or no, they have to try again because they're probably too high to use most of their actions anyway. Unless they're maybe like a wizard or something like that. 
it's just a really good firework and another highly recommended one because this deals with one of the most annoying enemies in the game, flying enemies. And something I want to mention about this one as well, it does mention here, Jumping Jenny costs two batches of infused reagents rather than one. It will say this multiple times. It's just the writer who did this who is being very sure to explicitly state, we know fireworks display the initial action says it costs one unless otherwise stated. Well, this is otherwise stated. It's very silly. And again, it shows that they were really trying hard with this particular archetype dedication. But honestly, it's a little redundant because it's obvious it's in the cost of the ability. But, you know. Next up is the Goblin Jubilee display, which is, as goblins are, very chaotic and probably one of the most powerful fireworks that you will get access to in this archetype dedication. What it does is you create a 20 foot burst of pure chaos and has a range of 120 feet. That's a massive range and it's a pretty big burst to 120 or not. A 20 foot bursts at 120 foot range is just nuts. Now it does cost three reagents, which is very expensive. And they even mentioned here, it costs three rather than one. Yes, thank you, we know. Uh, but what it does is all creatures in the area takes 3d6 fire damage and 3d6 sonic damage and attempt a basic fortitude saving throw. No. Yo, oh, yeah, it's, a, uh, well, it's essentially a basic fortitude saving throw with added effects. So if they succeed the check, now they succeed the check. They take half damage and they become dazzled and deafened. So if they succeed, they are dazzled. And deafened, though deafened is not something that really comes up in combat too much. It's not super relevant, but it's still cool, honestly. And that's a total of a fireball's worth of damage. So 6d6 damage, essentially, split between fire and sonic. And they're dazzled when they succeed. So <laughs> that's really strong. It's a very strong ability. And if they fail, they're dazzled and deafened for a minute. A minute. That's the whole combat. They just fail the check. They're screwed. They have to make a DC5 flat check to do really anything to anyone else. And your allies, if they're stealth inclined, can become undetected to them, which is just... It's really, it's a, this is a very actually overpowered ability, not going to lie. They also take full damage from the ability, obviously, as it's essentially a, a basic saving throw. And on a crit failure, they are blinded for one round, dazzled and deafened for a minute, and they take double damage from this. So it's a fireball that is just stronger than a fireball. Now it can't be heightened, so the damage never increases, but it's super powerful. And blinded for a round is even worse because they have to make a DC 11 flat check to affect anyone and everyone becomes hidden to them, which is just nuts in general. But they're then dazzled and deafened for a minute, which is already devastating as I already mentioned. So the Goblin Jubilee display is a must pick if you're taking the firework technician. It's just a free fireball. Well, not free. You use reagents, but it's extra fireballs that you can use using reagents. And by this time, you can use this ability three times in a day with just the sheer number of reagents you would have when you pick this particular feat up, which is so good. Considering how niche many of the other fireworks are it, you just have free reign to use the goblin jubilee display as much as you want unless those niche situations just happen to come up which is not very likely so you know fireballs just fireballs and they become dazzled forever which is just really strong the last feat is also a banger of one not quite as good as goblin jubilee because i just think that particular feat is broken but this is so good the banshee cry display is a reaction so this is a reaction that you get with this archetype so if you're already a class that doesn't get reactions this gives you a very solid reaction and what it does is if a creature within 30 feet of you casts a spell that has a verbal component or activates a magic item that has the command activation trait you set off a firework that screeches near them and essentially startles them to attempt to 
make them fail the the check. They need to make a will save. Now, if they succeed, nothing happens. If they fail, they must use an additional action or the triggering effect does, becomes disrupted, which can be which can just make some spells not go off if the spellcaster moved into the p position then cast the spell their spell is gone if they fail to check the spell is just gone because they don't have any other actions if it's activating a magic item it's more likely that they have an extra action because most activations are a single action but still an extra action just to activate a magic item whew, that's real rough and if they crit fail, the action is just disrupted. This is nuts. And I think they also made another mistake here. <laughs> yeah, they made another mistake here that makes this actually broken. There's no reagent cost here. <laughs> There's no reagent cost. This, you just have infinite actions to disrupt. Not infinite actions, obviously it's a reaction. So you can only do it essentially once per round. But you have an unlimited number of these in the day. So every round, you can attempt to disrupt the use of a spell or a magic item. This should be limited to like once per 10 minutes, in my opinion. Or it should cost some reagents. I would put this as two reagents because that's it's a really strong effect. But that's not here at all, which makes this real. Oh, 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 actually, actually, no, it is. Uh launch fireworks display okay it does cost one batch that's still really cheap but i i forgot the launch uh firework display the actual action which is what you would use for this though it's not an action to three actions i think that's the intent though that's my idea is it's the intent that uses the launch firework display but this is a reaction it could be argued that that's not the case considering it's just like a noise maker it's not necessarily a firework. I think the intent is this is to, supposed to use the, the base action kind of like the initial ones do. So this should cost a reagent, which I think is absurdly cheap for how powerful this is. And I think at least balances it more than just making this a free reaction. So as a GM, I would say it costs at least one, one reagent. Rules as written, or at least rules as intended. But rules as written... It doesn't cost anything. And it can be argued that it's not technically a firework because it's just a noisemaker. But that's how I would rule anyway. And yeah, that's the firework technician. Honestly, I'm sorry that this particular video probably took a little bit longer than it should have. There's a lot to explain with this, uh, this archetype dedication. And it's a really good archetype dedication and one that I don't think anyone should pass up. It's actually absurdly powerful. So... If you're looking to get some extra utility, some good like counter abilities to some nasty effects or a free set of fireballs in a given day, I would definitely check out the fire technician. It's just a really strong archetype and that's going to be it for me. Now, if you liked this video and you want to see more archetype videos, please at least leave a like to show that you enjoyed it. It helps with the algorithm and it'll help me out a lot. And if you want to see more, subscribe so that you're notified whenever a video comes up. And if you want to go the extra step, you can join us down in the Discord linked down below where we talk all things tabletop, not just Pathfinder 2E. And I also have a Twitter that you can follow me as well. So take your pick. You can find me wherever you're trying to look. And the channel is growing quickly. We, we have a really great... We've been getting a mass amount of people on the Discord showing up lately. So, And we have a lot of people coming to make games and to recruit people for games. Which is honestly probably one of the biggest things I want to do for the tabletop community in general. Is just make a space where it's easier to find games. Even if they're online, which might not be your preference. It's still something. So check us out down in the description. And that's going to be it for me. Thank you all so much for watching. Good luck with your games. Leave the bad luck to me. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.